Good day, everybody. Welcome to another What's This Then? Um, today we're going to be talking about Dragon Age the Veil Guard. Um, but before I get into it, it's been a little bit since my last video. A little bit longer than I'm going to be like. Work kind of got in the way. Just how it'd be. Um, but also, I don't really want to force making these videos. Or else I'm just not going to enjoy making them. And I also kind of feel like if I'm streaming, you know, which I have been doing over the past couple of days, and that kind of, kind of fills the same space, you know, so... That's a kind of, just to sort of let you know, that's my vague schedule idea with uh, with this YouTube channel and stuff. It's like, if I'm streaming, that's kind of like my idea of like, you know, that's also stuff going up there. So, um, as well as like whenever work gets crazy and stuff, I'm not going to, I'm not going to force myself to make these videos. As well as like, if there's a game, I just don't really think it would be interesting to make one on, then I'm just not going to. Because that's how, that's how I want to start this, you know. I don't want to be starting this with the idea of like, full 100% grind all the time because I'll just I'll just hate it I know I will so that's sort of where we sit but anyway let's get into it Dragon's Veil Guard so kind of a weird one with this this one had a very storied development uh, to say the least I believe it got stopped and started quite a few times um, originally it was going to have some like multiplayer component I think it was going to be a lot more like Inquisition and then some other gaming trends happened, development issues happened, it switched up, it changed, all sorts of things. So I think that's important context when going into this. But uh, yeah, this one made by Bioware. We know Bioware. We don't know if they're the same Bioware. Well, they're definitely not the same Bioware, because a lot of people have left over the years, but... We'll see what this new Bioware has cooked up for us here. Uh, published by EA. Obviously, Bioware made the dr former Dragon Age games and also the Mass Effect games and a few other things. We'll not talk about Anthem that much. Um, but this one comes out on pretty much everything, uh, platform-wise. Um, came out on the 25th of October, I believe, so I'm a little bit late to this, but, uh, sure, look, it do be like that sometimes. Oh, sorry, not 25th, sorry, my document that I used for writing down notes and stuff, I hadn't updated that, I just read that without even thinking. Um, 31st, 31st this came out. Halloween, Halloween Day. And you can pick this one up for like £45 or $50, I believe it is, if you have the EA Pass on Steam. Um, or or if you just own Game Pass, I believe you could get it for the same amount on there. Um, so honestly, pretty good price. Not, not a terrible price given current uh, gaming trends, considering Black Ops 6 just released recently for about £70. And you're definitely getting a lot more game with this. Unless you can't like the endless grind of Call of Duty multiplayer, which eh, I'm a bit hesitant to. But yeah, the value proposition on this one's pretty good, um, I would say, so far from what I've played in the game. And the EA, the EA Pass on Steam is actually very good value too. Um, I think it's like £20 a year or something like that, so it's ridiculously cheap. In my opinion, no, re no reason not to, not to have that pass for the, you know, the small uh, discount you get on uh, all their new releases. Uh, but obviously if you have Game Pass as well, then some of them just come out on Game Pass, so. Um, but yeah. Veal Guard. Let's jump into the settings before we get into anything too particular. Um, now, one thing to say, actually, um, is the performance of this game is absolutely incredible. Um, they really went to town on this one. Runs super well. I'm hearing a lot of reports of, like, even on, like, older machines that this is still running pretty damn amazingly. Which is really good to see. There's also, like, no DRM and stuff like that in this. Uh, you don't have to, like, link accounts, you don't have to do any of that, you just buy the game and you get it. Now, it will ask you if you want to link an account, but you can just skip it. But, uh, that sort of stuff, really cool to see. Um, however, the pessimist in me does see it as... Okay, EA actually realized that this game is up against it on the release. And how much of that did they just remove to make it as favorable as possible? Before seeing if it's successful and then putting all that back again. Like, say, for a next game or something like that, you know, if this does well. But, well, have time, will, time will see on that one. But let's have a look. So display graphics or display settings here. You've got, you know, borderless window, screen resolution, refresh rate, all that sort of business. Set a screen cap. You've just got a, f you've got a few different options. Not the greatest variety, but, I mean, single player games. So you probably don't need to go too crazy with it. 
Uh, you got triple buffering there, calibration stuff, you've got HDR support in this game. Um, you've got your typical upscale stuff, I'm just using DLSS quality because honestly I don't really ever notice it being on and I'll take the extra frames I guess. Frame gen, I usually leave off if DLSS does the job because frame gen introduces input lag, even single player game, even if it's like, you know, nearly imperceptible and stuff like that, I just prefer to have it off because I don't need the extra frames, so. And frame gen can cause visual weirdness, um, which I just leave off, no point in even worrying about it. Uh, rendering scale, uh, dynamic resolution scaling is on by default, by the way, so you may want to go in and turn that off whenever you get the, if you do decide to pick up the game. Uh, going to, into the graphics setting here, you got your usual assortment here, like it's a pretty nice one here, so you got volumetric lighting, you got your, you got your lighting quality, texture quality, texture filtering, pretty much everything you expect, and this game does have ray tracing, and I will say, I did not think I would, I, I did not expect much of the ray tracing in this game, because... Given that there's an idea that ray tracing really shines in like photorealistic, like sort of cyberpunk, um, for example, because a lot of shiny, shiny surfaces and stuff. Um, but the the ray tracing really does uh, good work here, and because the game is so optimized, I think this is a game that's worth uh, maybe turning that on if you can, if you've got the extra GPU overhead to to do so, because um, the game the game is very nice. Um, whenever I talk a bit more about the visuals and stuff, I'll go into a bit more on how I feel about that, but. Um, but yeah, um, you've got all sorts of different like geometry settings here, uh, strand hair, um, this game has some of the best looking hair I've ever seen in a game, it's kind of crazy. Uh, cinematic effect, or camera effects, you got motion blur, all that sort of business, um, yeah, turn that off immediately, vignette, turn that off for me personally. Field of view, um, you may want to turn this up, I think the, the default is maybe a bit on the lower side for most people, for me I'm okay with it so far, had not really that many issues. Uh, going into audio here, yeah, you got usual stuff, a lot of subtitle stuff, you've got advanced uh, subtitle settings, which lets you go really into it so you can see exactly uh, how you want to see it. Uh, yeah, your usual audio settings, a lot of different options here for choosing different uh, levels, which is always very nice. Mute while minimized, always fantastic. Always annoying whenever you uh, all tab out of a game and it's still just blasting at full volume in the background. Uh, your output, you've got a lot of different options uh, in here. Sign presets, your usual business, turn on 3D audio, mono sound, output config, yeah, good stuff. Um, controls, you have individual keybinds based on what class you're playing as, which is... An ab and to me, this is an insane option to see in a single player game. Um, this is something I would expect in like Overwatch, you know, with all the different characters and stuff, but that's really cool to see. I mean, I love that it's there. Uh, do your controller bindings, do all sorts. I mean, you can just edit it to your heart's content there. Um, controller bindings is one thing, yeah, that I'm, I'm seeing in, seeing in uh, more and more games these days, and it's just, yeah, just great to see. Because usually if a game did do control uh, rebinding, it would only be keyboard. But it's good to see controller get that as well. And you've got a bunch of different sensitivities and controller-based settings and sensitivities as well. Controller vibration, all that sort of business. Now, one thing I will say is that this game in my opinion, is 100% a game designed around controller. It's a bit strange if you play it with mouse and keyboard. It's not undoable. Um, it's some of the keybind options are a little bit strange. Some of the shortcuts are a little bit strange. Um, the movement feels like it was definitely designed with an analog stick in mind. Um, just the, the instant changing of directions with the keyboard keys can kind of make the characters move a bit weird, and the camera especially. Now, you may be able to edit this, you know, if you tweak the settings enough, but uh, I don't mind really playing controllers, so I haven't done that myself. But the camera does have this weird thing with the mouse where it kind of has, like, two different movement speeds. It's it's not like mouse acceleration or anything like that. It's just whenever you were... If you were to, if you were to whip the mouse around, it kind of feels like there's this little bit of buffer before it gets to like full speed it's, it's kind of hard to explain it's more of a feel thing but it's one of those things that just made me realize like yes this game was made with a controller in mind and um, we go into interface you can hide your helmet in conversations or all the time or never we always love that sort of thing because if you put a big goofy helmet on you maybe don't want it in cutscenes which is lovely uh, menus, yeah, you got your text size, cursor, um, menu navigation you can do cursor or focus mode um, which is cool because I've noticed a lot of 
controller based games using that like cursor style system a lot more these days. I think Destiny was a big uh, uh, big reason for that. Uh, that was the first game I sort of noticed to do it on a big scale. Uh, HUD, you've got a very customizable HUD. You can really do all sorts of things here. Um, Minimap positions, objective tracker visibility, combat tech size, all sorts. Show player health, show abilities, loads of stuff. Ability wheel, you can choose how this works. Um, it's got a very Mass Effect style ability wheel because you don't switch to the other players in, or the other members of your party anymore. You're only playing yourself. Uh, like Mass Effect, where you'd only play Shepard and then open up a menu to get your squad mates to use their abilities, so it's very similar to that. Uh, and then some like tutorial stuff, you can turn that on and off. Accessibility, there is a ton of accessibility settings in this game. Um, that was one of the big one of the big things for this game, I think, uh, in the marketing a little bit, was that they were talking about uh, how this is something they're really going hard on, and I would say, yeah, they've They've done a very good job of it. There's probably something in here for everyone. Um, so that if there's an aspect of the game that would sort of keep you from playing it, then um, there's probably, like I said, there's probably something here that you're going to be able to toggle or at least reduce, you know, maybe to a more acceptable uh, level. Like the low health screen effect, uh, text size, you can make it a lot larger, turn the camera shake down, uh, different uh, colorblind options, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's all really good, really, really good. And other settings, this is just like user agreement stuff, um, I don't need to worry about that. Nudity, I didn't even notice that, so oh my god, it's in there. But yeah, let's, um, so I'm gonna load up a previous save. Because the one I'm at currently is very text heavy. Whereas this one, I believe, I was just about to get into a fight, I believe, so I can show you off some of the combat, but... Yeah, welcome, welcome to the world of Dragon Age Veilguard. And visually, I remember whenever I was looking at the... So let me turn them down a smidge. But I remember when I was initially looking at the gameplay footage for this game. And I really didn't like it. Really did not like it at all. I did not like the, the art style they were going with, I just thought it looked very strange. But I have to be honest, now that I'm seeing it in person, and actually controlling it, and seeing it in motion, just in front of my own eyes on my own monitor, I really like it. I really do like it. From a landscape point of view as well, like these are some absolutely gorgeous vistas. In fact, there may be one right here. Like, look at this. This looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the characters, the character models and like the character faces and stuff like that might take a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're coming from um, the older Dragon Age games. It would be a bit, like Inquisition would be closer to this than the other two, obviously. But uh, I think I think it looks really good. Yeah, don't hate it at all. I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of sort of gripe about it, or a lot of people thinking they were going to have a big gripe with it, so I went into it with the mindset of, oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. Especially from what I'd seen from the trailers, like I said, and you know, I'm having a good time. Uh, but yeah, level-wise, it's a, it's a bit more of a linear experience. It's not like, well, so far anyway, it's not like uh, Inquisition at all, where you would have these big open areas and then you would sort of explore them as you wish and do side quests and all that. It's a bit more... I want to say Mass Effect 2-ish? Where you're given, you know, just sort of like these more like linear levels and it's kind of like just look around, you know, occasionally look around within those levels. Um, you'll find like little chests, you'll find like little things dotted around. They're, they're not too hidden. You know, nothing, nothing so far has been like too challenging to find. There's occasionally like a small puzzle to do to maybe find some extra currency and stuff like that. Uh, pr pretty standard stuff. Um, for the most part... It's the look of these places, but I can just show you some of the combat now. So I am personally playing as a mage. And I've been having a really good time. Um, now the combat, obviously with it being a lot more focused on one person, the combat is a lot more involved, even as a mage. Like, uh, right off the bat, you're given this, like, more melee-centric option. With this, like, dagger and orb. 
where you can like build up an arcane bomb effect on people and then hit them with this like magic dagger and it like detonates them and stuff. It's it's uh it's pretty cool. I kind of like it. I kind of like it so far. That was another big point of uh, hesitation for this game for me was I really had to see how the combat was going to go. Um obviously there it's a big departure. It kind of, it's not the biggest departure from the likes of maybe Inquisition. It kind of maybe feels like the next step in where the timeline of the games was going in terms of their combat because they were just moving further and further away from the CRPG style. Um, but yeah, it's obviously it's obviously very far away from uh, Origins or Dragon Age 2, for example. Let's slide on down here and have a fight with this big fella. And you'll notice that I'm fighting Darkspawn. Um... I can't remember if we fight many Darkspawn in 2 or Inquisition, but um, obviously the the big thing of Origins was that you fight them, and it's really cool just to be seeing them in the, this like modern style. Some of their designs look a little bit weird in the new style, but some of them actually look pretty good. Uh, but that sort of brings me on to the story. And so far, I'd say the story's pretty good. Um, if you're if you're a Dragon Age fan and you're very heavily invested in the story, I think you're going to be having a good time with this. Uh, nothing too crazy so far, but there are some um, interesting sort of uh, narrative uh, threads uh, to be following, and some some things that have been set up that I'm very interested to see, like where those go or how they're handled. But here you can see a little bit of the exploration around the level, for example. So I could go, you know, go straight on there, or I can, uh, you know, take a little turn down here and maybe go find some extra bits and pieces down here. Now, I have been getting these like materials and stuff. Uh, so far, I haven't run into any sort of crafting system, but I would be shocked if there isn't at least some kind of uh, system like that in this game. Uh, but you get these like bigger chests here where they actually give you gear. Uh, one very cool thing about the way the gear system works, actually, is I'll just uh, I'll open that up here for you if that would like to go away, because for some reason I can't I can't actually access that while that's up, which is a little bit annoying. But this is sort of your gear system, pretty basic stuff, you know, helmet, armor, a few accessories, weapon. Uh, with mage, for example, you know, I've got my mage knife and my orb for more close range stuff and my staff for more long range. Uh, but one very cool thing, um, so I bought this helmet from a vendor, um, it was a grey quality helmet at the time, and then I found that same helmet in a chest, and you know, you're playing an RPG, you're like, ah, typical, you know, buy the, buy the helmet, find it in a chest, 10 minutes later, realise you didn't need to buy it. But what this game does is that whenever you get a duplicate of an item, it actually upgrades the rarity of it. So this went to a green helmet, which unlocked this 15% weak point damage thing, which uh, I don't believe I've seen a game do before. Um, not saying it hasn't been done before, but just me personally, I've never seen that before. And yeah, I really like that system. Uh, it just means whenever you find a duplicate, you know, that it's like, oh great, I get to sell this for, you know, a pittance. It's like, nope, it's actually upgraded you. Um, you're actually notably stronger in this specific way of rarity because you find it. And I think that's a really cool system. I really enjoy that. Uh, but you can see at the bottom here, um, these are kind of like your three abilities, and then you kind of have like this ultimate ability, um, which sort of builds up over time. So far it takes quite, quite a while to actually build it up. You won't be getting it like per fight by any means or anything like that. Uh, companions, you can sort of, you know, can edit their stuff as well. They sort of have these abilities as well. Um, and you can sort of get, you can give them commands to do this sort of thing in the middle of fights. And this is kind of like your skill tree here. Now, if you've played Path of Exile, this will look very familiar. Because uh, that's definitely what it's going for. So instead of like previous games where you would pick a class, level it up, and then at some point you would get like a specialization to go into. This game is just, here's your big tree, go to whatever specialization you want. Um, which... It does mean that the class starting out, like you just start the class level one, you can already kind of play it like how you want. Like I wanted to go Spellblade because um, I really enjoyed playing Spellblade in Origins. And I was like, okay, how long am I going to have to go through the game until I get the Spellblade specialization so I can actually play the class how I want? And it's like, no, you're actually given a taste of that, you know, mage dagger and orb like right out of the gate um and then i can go down here and really specialize into that style of play which is very very cool 
and it's got the modern thing that a lot of RPGs are doing that have skill points is you can just refund your points at any time. So you don't have to worry about within your class, you can refund and try any of the specializations pretty much whenever you want, as long as you obviously have enough points to get to it. Um, now, I don't believe there will be respecking into actual different classes, like into uh, Rogue or Warrior or whatever, because the, the, they've never... They've never really provided that sort of thing because that's usually pretty integral to like character dialogue choices, pretty set in stone. But being able to respec into the specializations is very cool because the uh, you know I was very tempted by Death Caller. I thought it was going to be a bit more necromancy whenever I seen the class existing, uh, but I think it's just a bit more of like a debuff and you know drain life that kind of thing. But now I can still try it. You know, I can still just be like. Hey, um, I've tried out Spellblade, let's respec and now I'm Deathcaller. Let's respec and now I'm an Evoker. So I think that'll be, I think that's a really good system. Uh, you do get a basic map. As you can see, the levels are very linear. Not all of them so far have been this linear. You do get some areas that open up a bit. Um, but they seem more like uh, sort of mini explorations. Whereas this is like a mission I am on. So it's a bit more linear. But uh, I, d I don't hate these. I don't hate these uh, levels or anything. Um, they're just not the most like interesting to actually like navigate, for example. Uh, but looking at them, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, now, obviously, I sh really should have said before I jumped in here, but as with any RPG, doing this style of video, you're going to see spoilers. But that's kind of sort of how it goes. But just to let you know that there is kind of like one coming up here. But it's nothing like too crazy. But we got like a bit of a boss fight going on here. And you can see like, uh... You can see all the abilities at the bottom, and if I hold L2, that's sort of like my shortcut. So I can like, use D-pads or some of these shoulder buttons there. Or some of the right side buttons, um, bumper buttons to make my allies do some stuff. Or I can hold R1 and actually open up the big wheel. And this lets me slow down time and actually like think about what I want to do. And it will actually pinpoint like abilities that um, enemies are like weak against. So this does burning damage, so this enemy is weak to that. So that did big damage to him. This game also has a... I believe I'm just before where the game is going to tell me about it. Yeah, because I don't have the abilities yet. But this game has a Mass Effect style uh, primer and detonation system. Like how the uh, biotic abilities had. So I'm just going to skip the cutscene here because I've already seen this. So if you don't want to be spoiled, yep, yep, some crazy shit going on. Boss fight time. Are you moving those ropes? Yeah, it has like Mass Effect 3 style, like, um... Set someone up with an ability and then use... Well, here it is. And then use an, a different ability to actually detonate. So if we do this, we can use Harding's ability, Shred, which uh, it says applies. So now he has that on him. You can see his little icon above his uh, bar there. And then uh, Nev here has um, Icebreaker, which detonates those primes. So you hit her with that. You get this big triangle prism, and then they explode. And then any enemies that would be around would also explode. You know, it's just like one of those big, like, if you want to do the most damage possible and do a big cool explosion, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it adds another layer to the combat. And there's also like a stamina bar that people have. You can see above the health bar there, it's like a little purple one. Whenever enemies uh, have that filled up, you can do a like sort of finisher on them. And the animation for that will depend on uh, your weapon and stuff. So I use a bit of staff and throw some fireballs at them. And I've also got this chain lightning, which I can hit him with that. And it zaps to all of them. Very strong ability. Really like it. Uh, you do kind of have like this mana system that slowly recharges and a cooldown system, so you're not going to be just spamming abilities like crazy. Uh, a lot of dodging as well. There is blocking as well. I've got a big mage bubble. Um, and there's also parrying, uh, which you can do as a mage, which is uh, something I did not expect. All right, it's a bit hard to pull off in this situation. Let's see if I, I can parry him. There we go. Timing on it isn't uh, too tight or anything like that. But it's like right at the gate. Like, you know, I'm only level like, well, like five here, I think. 
whatever I was. Um, and I already feel like I can kind of play like the spell blade I want to be. I think that's pretty cool. Um, you also see like uh, the new sort of health system. It's uh, just three heals and you sort of find different health pickups in these like green jars which do stick out certainly um they definitely stand out as oh this is a very video gamey health system you know there's the big green jar go get your health type thing but it's like it's one of those things that you, you look on the surface and it's like mm, i think i like the older systems you know they were a bit more free form and they rewarded like good play because you could hoard heals and all that sort of stuff you know for big moments where you really needed them um but it, it does allow the combat to be more well balanced i will say because they know that you can go into every fight without most three heals so they can really balance and fine tune the combat around that sort of thing now it's not the most elegant solution when it comes to stuff like uh you know like immersion and that sort of business but it's it's kind of like a give and take system in that regard, but that that's really game development in a nutshell, isn't it? Oh, I've got my ultimate, so I'm gonna hit this guy with a big beam, which does a lot of damage, which is why you see you don't get it very often. That, that dagger. What did it do to me? So sure. I suppose that's a good time to talk about it. One of the biggest gripes I do have with this game is the the dialogue isn't anything to write home about at all it's fine it does the job it's a bit quippy it's a bit um like there's not really a lot of edge to it it's, it's you know there's no there's no real sharpness or anything like that it's just uh it, it, mo it moves things along that's that's really the most of what i can say about it I'll just sort of get us through this here. Because I would like to show you it when it's not a big story moment. If possible. Uh, there is these great cutscenes, though. Um, they are using, like, the tarot card design that they sort of popularized in Inquisition. It's not quite as nice as Inquisitions, but it's, it's nice to see it, you know, it being brought over somewhat. Um, cause you do get some of these little like story cutscenes in that style, which is pretty cool. Um, you can see on the left, uh, you increase bond with your party members and stuff. Um, you know, like romance and all that sort of things in the game. Pretty typical, like uh, what you what you what you'd expect from a Bioware game in that sense. Um, but this this sort of area we're in right now, it's called like the lighthouse, and I believe this is going to be our like hub. I don't know if it's going to be a permanent hub, but it certainly seems like it's going to be one for the foreseeable future. And then uh, just leveled up here, so we can just go in here and yeah, like I said, you'll you'll very much recognize this from uh, Path of Exile, and you can just you know pick out some nodes and be like, hey, look, I want that. Let's work toward that. Some of the bigger nodes do more like. Uh, bigger effects on your character. So this one, I believe, is what I picked. Uh, if my character's wearing medium helm and armor, then I get a bunch of different uh, damage increases, so that's good stuff, and I'm sort of working my way down here. But yeah, it's... Um, I, can't, I came into this game with a bit of a negative mindset. And I have to say... Well, not really negative, but I came in expecting expecting to not like it because of what i had seen the art style and you know the bits of dialogue we'd seen and i knew the combat was changing i knew the game had like a very worrying development process you know being stopped and started so many times that been development for so long and usually those sorts of things don't tend to live up to it and stuff but i'm having a good time i'm having a good time with it the combat's fun the characters are like they're okay you know so i haven't really met any of them too well yet apart from like say harding and varick is obviously amazing we love varick solace you know from inquisition uh he's obviously gonna be a big part of this one that, that's a that's one thing actually like yeah playing playing this game without having played the inquisition dlc is uh very interesting that was a, that was an interesting choice to make the stuff that happens in that dlc a dlc you know considering how important it is to the, the overall story and how it basically is what connects you to this game. 
But yeah, I've been having a really good time with this one. Um, it, it's good. You know, it's seven, seven and a half out of ten sort of, sort of territory. That's sort of how I feel about this one. It's not incredible. I, uh, my favorite was Origins. My favorite will probably always be Origins. I just, I will prefer CRPG style for RPGs, I think. Um, or at least for like these types of games. Obviously there are exceptions to that. But, uh, you know, likes like Fallout New Vegas and stuff like I'll, t I'll take that every day of the week as well. Cyberpunk, you know, that sort of stuff. But in, in terms of Dragon Age, I think this game suited being a CRPG. In a different world, we get a Dragon Age Veilguard that started development after Baldur's Gate 3. And when EA seen that CRPGs can be big, big sellers and just let Bioware go to town. And, may, and sort of return it to that if they even wanted to. I don't. I don't even know if they would have wanted to. Obviously, the the team at Bioware is very different now than what it was. So maybe maybe that was just never going to happen. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. But I would have loved to have seen a return to a CRPG style. But like I said, this this style isn't bad. It's not bad at all. Um, now, is it going to be enough to keep me interested through? From what I've heard, about 50, 60 hours of game. I don't know. It will depend on how it develops. If it stayed exactly the same as it is now, I don't think it would. But we've got a big skill tree, we've got a lot to experiment with, there's a lot of game left to go. There could be some interesting, uh, some real interesting items and stuff to pick up. Um, you know, like the way builds work and stuff, like there could be some really good synergy. I haven't even got three of the accessory slots, so I don't know how much they're going to change things. There's this, which I have literally just noticed for the first time right now. I didn't even realize this was part of my progression. So something's going on with that. There's supposed there's probably going to be some kind of crafting system. Although I have a feeling it's going to be used to upgrade the hub, maybe. Because this place has some things that will let you uh, actually place for yourself in here. And then we'll have to see how like the characters keep up. We'll have to see if the dialogue gets uh, any different, but... The, di the dialogue, it's it's very easy just to, you know, it's it's just run of the mill. It just it get you, gets you from A to B. So that that's probably the biggest the biggest gripe I have of this. Um, but to sort of conclude on this one, because I feel like I've sort of said what I need to say on it. Uh, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything, but I don't believe I am. Um, well, I suppose actually the music. Uh, music's fine. Yeah, music's good. Uh, it's pretty typical, like, fantasy RPG stuff, you know, nothing really stands out as being too particularly amazing, but it's not bad either, it does the job. Um, but yeah, in conclusion, I would say for the money it's worth, especially if you're a Dragon Age fan, if you've never played a Dragon Age game before, that might be a, that might be a tougher one. Um, it really, it, it, it'll depend on what you like from your RPG and whether you like what you've saw here and if writing's a big part of what you like, if combat's a big part of what you like, you know, all these things are going to factor into it. But personally, for me, being a Dragon Age fan, I'm happy enough buying this. I think it's a good value, especially, like I said, if you have that EA pass, you can get the game for like £45, which is not bad for the amount of game you're getting here. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I believe that's all I wanted to talk about, so thanks for watching everyone. Um, I don't know what my next one's going to be on. I think I might do it on maybe the Red Dead PC release when I have a look at that. Um, Monster Hunter Wilds is out, or the Monster Hunter Wilds beta is out. I probably won't do one on like a little, you know, technical beta, whatever like that. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'll definitely be streaming more recently, so keep an eye out for that. And thank you for watching. I shall see you either on the stream or on the next video. See you then.